let's welcome now David Kalen. Thank you so much for taking time out of, I know, a busy schedule for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege and an honor to be here with you today. Great. Well, you know, your name came to me via your um, your good buddy down there, Kathy Bateman. A lot of our viewers will know who Kathy is, and she's a real go-getter. I've had her on Absolutely. a couple months ago. Um, is she still your campaign manager, by the way? Just Absolutely. She is out there every day uh, uh, out on that stump for me, as well as uh, lining things up. So uh, shout out to, uh, to uh, Kathy. You have done a phenomenal job, and thank you. She sure has. Um, and I just love her to death. So, so let me, I start always all my shows, David, to give the audience a little perspective of who David Callen is. Try to explain to them, first off, what your life was like when it was normal and uh, what, how you started, um, you know, what you did then and, and, and then what started waking you up to get so involved for this race that you've got coming up. And then we'll talk a lot about the race. So the floor is yours. Okay, well, I, I, I've always say that life's never normal. If it's normal, uh, you're not doing something right because you, you need to be involved, you need to be active, no matter what it is. Um, as a uh, Christian, very involved in uh, church, the community. But for me, I have been a conservative since high school. Uh, it has been a way of life. It is the way I handle my finances, the way I run my business, the way I, I conduct myself in the world, doing the right thing, even when the right thing is not popular. You can never go wrong with doing it right. And uh, uh, along with that, it's uh, I saw a need uh, after the 08 collapse. I had lived in Pennsylvania. I have, I have lived all over the country. I was an IBM kid growing up. Uh, so we removed quite a bit. It's, it's like being a military brat and uh, had settled in, in uh, northeast Pennsylvania, just outside of the Philadelphia area. And I saw our community going downhill and be it the union negotiations, the tax increases, it was non-sustainable. And everybody hears what goes on in, in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. So I decided to get involved, make a difference, make a change. Quit talking about it and get involved. So I ran for office. I became a uh, commissioner in the state of Pennsylvania uh, for a, a little municipality up there. Uh, loved what I did, followed through with what I uh, set out to do. And uh, when, when it got to the point where you're fighting such a machine that you cannot get the school taxes under control, uh, the state taxes under control, you come to a point where you start to do loss mitigation. I said, you know what, Florida's looking great. We were at this belief that Florida is this gold standard, uh, cheaper living. Um, so the family packed up and we headed to Florida and I said, I'm kind of done with politics. I'm gonna be semi-retired, enjoy my life, uh, fly for an airline, just kind of relax. And uh, that didn't last long. I saw what was going on in our local politics between the taxes, the uh, code enforcement, the ever increasing, uh, uh, control of our daily lives by our local politicians, our state politicians. Um, they have the biggest impact in our daily life. And I said, I'm running. So put our uh, board on notice. I ran. And I will tell you at the end of the, the 2022 primary, and I will, I will tell most folks, if you're getting involved, our elections, at least in Charlotte County, and I know in a number of other counties in Florida, your local races are determined in your primary. So it is absolutely important for these uh, folks that want to be involved or voters that want to get involved, get to your primary. That is where you will make the difference in your local races. Don't wait till the fall. Show up to the primaries. So after that primary race was a failed race, things didn't look quite right. So we just put a note out there uh, online uh, to all those supporters and said, hey, if anybody had any anomalies voting, incurred any issues, let us know. I could not believe the flood of emails, phone calls, text messages, documents started pouring in. And what it came down to is there's a system that is broken and that's our electoral system here, uh, at least in Charlotte County. I know as well as the rest of the state, a number of us uh, work on many committees throughout the state, kind of sniffing out what's going on. And uh, that is really what brought me to this point to where I'm running now. Uh, I will tell you, life would be so much easier to not have to deal with this if we had quality uh, uh, representatives that were fighting to keep our property taxes low, fighting for the people, ensuring our rights were protected uh, as our founding fathers set forth with our constitution. But for whatever reason, so many of them get this little taste of power and they wanna strip us of that. Because I, I retired from the airline uh, uh, January uh, last year 
and we do have a farm. We've been running a farm for about 10 years. We opened a little farmer's market feed store. I'd rather be sitting here doing that day in and day out. My father moved down here. My folks moved down here. Love having our family together, doing those types of things. That's my normal life, us doing things together as a family. My kids work with us, but that has to be a little bit on hold. Thank God I have such quality family and friends surrounding to be able to help take care of those issues so that I can put the kind of time in and uh, make these things happen with the team that we have. Again, you mentioned uh, Kathy Bateman. We have so many others I could name today that have been involved in this because it's, it's not a one man show. This is a team of quality people that have gotten active, not just in my campaign, but numerous campaigns, numerous issues throughout the county that um, it is it is spearheaded into this huge movement in Charlotte County to the point that the grassroots candidates and, and individuals have taken over our REC, our executive committee in the county, uh, kind of ousting some of the uh, longtime holdouts. And we're charting a new course. Uh, last uh, November, uh, the, the uh, executive committee made a choice to endorse a Republican over a Republican that was a, a incumbent. That race in the city of Punta Gorda ended up with almost over a 72% turnout vote for the newcomer grassroots, Debbie Lux, which uh, she has been very vocal, outspoken, very forthcoming, uh, conservative on, on, hey, we need more information. We really need to vet these things out before we just make snap judgments and decisions that our staff says, oh, this is what we need. We hear that too much. We need it, we need it, we need it. Do we really need it? Is it a want or a need? And so here I am with all these folks around trying to make this difference in the face of adversity here in Charlotte County. We've got elected officials now saying, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're a bunch of crazies. They don't have any proof of anything. Yet some of them have been offered the documentation and photos and they don't want to acknowledge it and then That's, continue to yeah. discredit. And that is typical of, if you want to call them the Uniparty, the Rhinos, uh, the leftists that have infiltrated, whoever you want to call them, the establishment really likes those folks because they're the go along to get along folks. A developer wants to clear out 3,000 acres and put in 4,000 homes. That's the guys that are going to let it happen. They're not going to look at things responsibly because it's it's about staying in a position. I've signed a, a, a two-term commitment. Uh -huh. I'm term limiting myself to this position or any other position I have run to two terms. If you can't get it done in eight years, you're not going to get it done. Yeah, no, those are all good points. And what a fascinating uh, history leading up to this. I didn't realize you came from Pennsylvania. So you've already lived uh, the experience of seeing what supposedly a gold standard uh, really uh, knocked over on his head. And now you're able to apply that experience to the folks. I, you, you make me want to move down to Charlotte County because we're a mess up here in Pinellas, um, but you know uh, where I met Kathy and so many other great patriots across the state was through Defend Florida, um, and here in Pinellas after that uh, 2020 election is when we all started realizing the gold standard was non-existent. It's just a bunch of hooey, um, and um, and and now we know the truth. So and yes, I've been called all those names too. Um, and as I told you before the show, if it wasn't for the uni party, which folks, if you don't know where that term came from, it really is a mix of all the Democrats um, with the left and along with at least half of the Republicans Absolutely. that we have in office today. So it is a race to the fitters starting at the local level up. And I commend you for stepping up to the plate, David. So you are running for the position of supervisor of elections down in your area. What made you think of running for that position? After the email started flooding in after the last campaign, uh, after the primary 2022, uh, things just didn't feel right. They didn't look right. Uh, exit polling was completely different than what, what the outcomes were. They had the appearance of some algorithms. Then documentation started coming into me. Photos started coming into me. Uh, some of these from poll workers, poll watchers, uh, some employees that, that some of them not even at the SOE's office anymore. Uh, keep in mind, our, our former SOE did resign in a hurry, claiming health reasons uh, amid me submitting a bunch of documentation to the state. 
So there was a number of issues going on that we were we were noti noticing, um, questioning what was going on, how things were being handled, um, document requests. Uh, we're still having the issues. So when he resigned, it was based on health issues. I'll take it at face value. Um, I put in for the appointment. Uh, I had already announced in September of 2022 as a uh, candidate for SOE because of what we were coming out of oh. August seeing happen. I said, with my extensive computer background, my uh, systems integrations backgrounds and security background, um, I got this. I can handle this. I can handle it across multiple platforms. God bless you. Paper, computers, staffing. We can do this. I have a plan to really bring the light into the elections. And that started to panic folks. And after Paul resigned, uh, there was a flurry of activity that went in his, on in his office with nobody running the, the, the helm. I don't think they realized how many people were actually advocating for what we were doing and to make the changes we've got the staff removing dozens of ballot boxes and records boxes out of the office middle of the day putting them into the back of an employee's car the car was driven to the former soe's house dumped into his garage i don't know what records they were there's no records of those records being what is destroyed. his full name paul, paul stimolis okay so um what became more disturbing was in, in January of uh, 23, uh, wee hours of the night, a group of concerned citizens, this is all part of this huge group of citizens working together to say enough's enough with this uh, cabal that is really going on within our county and the state. Public access dumpster at the SOE's office, they open it up and there's shredded documents. Many of them appear to be ballots, Ugh. voter ID cards, registrations, but in there was computers, some hard drives intact, a, a full out computer tower from the woman that handled voter registration, new voter registration with the hard drive fully intact, everything there. They brought it to me. They call me, we're on our way to your house. Me, I don't particularly want all this in my possession. Yeah, However, no I know who to communicate with. So the okay. moment they arrived, I videoed everything. So we had a log, we knew chain of custody from the dumpster to them, to me. Then I took everything to my attorney, is sequestered into his vault. I reached out to the state. No, res well, the sheriff's department didn't want to handle it. The oh Who is your uh, sheriff down there? Bill Promel. Okay, because uh, we got to start throwing some, um, you know, uh, shining some light on these folks that are not. Yeah. And what you have the law. at the local law enforcement level, so many of our sheriffs and so many of our deputies aren't educated in the law. And I, I think we I, need to start I, advocating that our sheriffs should probably be defense attorney first because they actually understand the law because they defend against some of the craziest stuff that they're trying to charge something that's really not a, a, a crime or they won't prosecute a crime that is on the books because they think it's out of their wheelhouse, such as this was. So then I went to our state attorney's office, no avail, went to FDLE. We're not equipped to handle that. This is all January 8th, 9th period. Infuriating. Um, Went to Cord Bird's office, the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. um, nothing. Went to the De went to Governor DeSantis's office. Nothing. So, I did a podcast in uh, summer time frame, and uh, finally that got the attention of the state when they were getting called out. In the meantime, what was the podcast? So it was the Mike and Bassiani show, and uh, talked about what has been found, what's going on, and. You know, the fact that it, we have an appearance of selections, not elections. And I'll get into that in a minute, why I'm stating that. Mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime, there's this data breach. When you get into banking security or any other kind of personal information security, you're required to notify the public that their data may have been breached. And there's enough information on a voter registration between your driver's license, your birth date, your signature, your address. It's all the pertinent information somebody needs to steal your identity. So I sat down, arranged a meeting with our appointed SOE, Leah Valente. Uh, uh, it was actually on May 26th. And I left her know everything. Told her I have this computer. Good she for banged you. her head on her desk, said the F word quite a few times. And that was the end of it. I gave her ample time. She said the F word? 
Oh, she, she makes me blush as, as, as a Baptist minister. Yes, I'm a I Baptist you're minister. Now. I, I was <laughs> appalled that that language would come out of a woman, uh, or let alone a mouth in a professional setting. Um, but that's her choice. That is her choice to talk like that. I just choose not to use that. Um, but nothing was done. And fast forward uh, to recently, um, it ended up as a news article in the, in the Sun newspaper here in Charlotte County. And she's, oh no, I started the investigation. And here I'm sitting here with the letter, the email straight from the state investigator, uh, Andrew Darlington, that says, we were made aware that you were in possession of this via a podcast you did. So no, it was not by the supervisor of elections that was appointed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's unless she went to one of these other agencies and experienced the same thing I experienced where they all drop the ball because they don't want to touch it. We're the gold standard. Don't talk about it. If you ignore it, it didn't happen. Um, so that's what well, I'm you know, a lot in this. If I can stop you there, because really that whole uh, I, uh, concept of how to deal with the stolen elections of 2020 came down straight from Rona McDaniels, RNC. Mm -hmm. And even RPOF uh, vice chair at the time, Christian Ziegler, went around, this was 2021, a couple months after the stolen election, um, and sat down at every REC and literally told us all, not just my REC, I have others in other RECs, don't talk about the, the fraud, don't talk about... The, and I asked him why, and his answer was, and this apparently, according to him, was the official... Um, official saying from straight from the RNC was that if we continue to talk about the fraud, nobody's going to show up to vote in 2022. And I said to him, well, wait, how about if we don't fix the fraud, nobody will show up to vote. Um, and so I've been screaming that since uh, a couple months, a couple days really after the stolen election. But um, mm -hmm. I was pushed back so hard through while I was with, doing all my work for Defend Florida and also even after that, even to this day, by Republicans in name only. And yep. so it's a sin. We have to get rid of them. We have not tried to co-opt their party, folks. They have hijacked our original Republican Party. And that's why I founded Pinellas Watchdogs here um, to keep our own REC in line and to start vetting our own candidates. Because as you said, the primary vote is critical for the local candidates. Absolutely. So, so what, what has anything happened with all of that? So, uh, over, evidence? The so over the past uh, few months now, uh, FDLE, FDLE has taken possession of the documents. They've taken possession of the computers. Well, we'll never and, see them again, but go ahead. Um, <laughs> I took photos of everything. Good for you. So I have backups. I, I jokingly, having been in the banking security systems and DOD contracting, I, you've got dead man switch. You deal with all that because you want multiple copies, backups out there. Do you, you know, know you, Richie Nutt? No, I do not. Uh, did you see my podcast with him? I have not seen that one yet. Well, you go back and look because he's with the DOD and, and, and okay. analysts, I believe. And um, he's very heavily involved with Defend Florida and elections. You two need to meet. So I'll make that connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it, is the more folks we can get with eyes on. He's Polk County. Together? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the big things that started getting me to this, we have selections, not elections, mm -hmm. is I had a, a poll worker that contacted me with photos um, during early voting, during the 2022 midterm uh, general election, and a week before election day. They're driving in the election van, and boom, out slides a sealed blue bag with the thumb drives, complete with a post-dated receipt for election day in the election <laughs> van. For a precinct. And I have those documents, the photos. So you start to ask, why is one that in the election van floating around and not secured? But two, how do we have a post dated receipt a week before the election? This is election incredible. Day? So that right there sent me down this rabbit hole of discovery. Um, I have. Our I'm sorry, story. when was that? Uh, that would have been in um, October of. 22. 
Okay. I'll be happy to send you all the documentation. No, the thank you. I've got um, documents <laughs> up my kazoo. You, it sounds like you're doing a good job down there. Absolutely. But if our Pinellas Watchdogs EI committee leader, Tina Peters, would like to see them, I will definitely put the Absolutely. two of them together. Absolutely. As well. Thank so you. So I start digging through more and I request uh, chains of custody. Now, when you get into a legal uh, case and, and having worked in the in the field I've worked, I've I've testified in many federal cases as a expert witness okay. on whether it be wiretap or uh, cybersecurity and other issues. So I'm very familiar with with the uh, laws and statutes. But um, w when you get into this and you look at the chains of custody and go, I need those chain of custody, and you get them, and you find out during the 22 election cycle between the primary and the general, mm -hmm. tw over 28 percent of those chain of custodies either did not have the signatures from the clerks oh my God. or the SOE's office, or there were no seals present on anything. Um, so you start to question the validity of what's going on. And when you've got that big of a failure and they go, well, we can't force the clerks to do anything. Yes, you can. They're working at your behest. If your employees are not doing their job, they're terminated and another employee is brought in or you've got to do what we did. I, my most recent career, I worked uh, for an airline. I flew as a flight attendant, but also air transportation supervisor. I interfaced with the FAA and the airline for compliance to ensure procedures were followed. Because in that business, if you do not follow protocol and procedure, you get dead. So following mm -hmm. protocol and procedures is of the utmost importance to me. So as I'm following through all this and understanding this, I'm realizing that you get into a court case and you're missing a chain of custody or it's not correct for a, a murder weapon, that murderer might walk free. Why are we not holding the same standard to our elections? Because we're allowing people to either get into office or not get into office that were either duly elected or not duly elected by the people because people are not doing their due diligence to follow their job training. And we have that. I've kind of done a postmortem to what we've got going on in this office. And it, mm -hmm. all the way around, I'm hearing training failure, training failure, training failure, training failure. We were never taught that. Which brings me to our most recent, our presidential primary with our new SOE. A week before, two weeks before our presidential primary, we're not going to use staff. We're going to use all poll workers to open and close our precincts. But we didn't train them for that. So I'm going to send them a video and a little email blurb. Have fun, kids. It has been a train wreck right down to our very own Kathy Bateman is at our San Caso location on day one of early voting. God and there sets the secure ballot intake station. The one that under section 101.031 is required to be emptied at the end of every day, secured and manned at all times when it's available for ballots. Already filled Monday morning at 6 a.m. with ballots. They sat there all weekend long oh in God. that box. Unfortunately, our current SOE says, well, that's okay. Uh, they were in there. They were leftovers. The courier didn't get there till the till middle of the day. And it, it, I'm sorry, but your job's very clear. Empty it at the end of the day, lock and key, no access. That's why the statute 101.031 was developed. And that was a more recent development after what went down in so many other states. You watch 2000 mules. You've got people coming in at all hours of the night. Yep dumping tons of ballots in, and that was the purpose to be watched, manned, and secured. And unfortunately, we're not getting that here. We're getting more excuses. And I'm not picking on the young lady. Um, this just is not her fault. We have a country to save. I don't have any feelings for anybody yep. at this point. So, it's like, if you're not doing yep. your job, get the hell out of the way. Absolutely. We need action. Yep. So with my background, I've been programming computer technology at machine code long before there was Windows or DOS, six years old, I was programming. Wow. Home computers. You are the right person for this yep. position. I'm thrilled to 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 be able to share your message because I didn't know any of this, David. Yep. So my background in this is, as like I said, self-taught as an IBM kid, machine level programming, just a few characters into an update into the machine code, not the program code, and you can skew an election. They say, oh, they're not connected to the internet. It's hogwash. They have a tell write card in the DS200s, which is an air card. It's using cellular service to communicate. And they're going to tell us, oh, but they're not connected to the internet. Well, they're telling you the truth and a lie at the same time because it's a VPN. 
It's not across broadband internet like you would think, but it's still connected to their servers, which are connected to the internet. Which um, Chris Gleason has really done a good job of educating yeah. people up here and all over about. So, so I, absolutely. We're, we're, we're coming a little low on time. I want to get your website up for that. So if, if, if anybody would like to help out down there, let's go ahead and put that up and share with us uh, what actually uh, you'd like to guide us to in this website here, David. So the website's going to give you everything you need to know there about me. And we are doing some new updates to it. I'm going to be posting some short videos. So I'd encourage people to come out and start watching some of the short videos that we're going to be posting on there in the next couple of weeks that get into each little nuance of election integrity and how we can bring transparency into it. Why are we not posting with the current system we have? Why are we not posting our ballot images online for everybody to see them? You know, yes. believe your lion eyes kind of thing. And so with this, I get into my background, uh, what I did as a DOD contractor in uh, 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 systems design and systems integrations, um, my time in IT, my own company, large banking corporation out of the Northeast, uh, managing their IT and security. Um, so I have seen it all. I've been through it all, as well as my experience in the airline. So if you go out to davidekalen.com, it's going to give you everything you need to know about me. There is a donate button on there. Campaigns are expensive. We've got to get the yes. word out because what it comes down to is getting that word out. The person that can get those mailers out and they're the last one that that person sees that mailer at the door, that's the name they recognize. I'm unfortunately up against a candidate who on day one found it more important to put a full life-size cardboard cutout of herself at the entrance to all our offices rather than promote election security. She changed the seal at the elections <laughs> office to put her name on the seal instead of just supervisor of elections. Her name is on every pen, every piece of paper. That is just- That amazing. is used in the SOE offices? Yes. Oh so my me, God. That's, isn't that illegal? That's campaigning from your seat. Yes. And I look at that and say, number one, I'm frugal. I'm not cheap. I'm frugal. It's about being responsible with every dollar that the taxpayers give you. So if you're putting your name on every piece of thing you have in there, including pens, when you're voted out of office or you're removed from office, the taxpayers are forced to pay for that all over again. That should not happen. Oh, You're going to get somebody who is fiscally responsible with those tax dollars so that we can reduce the cost. We're going to use some very good software to start cleaning up our voter rolls because voter rolls is a very important thing to me because we've got people that are 71 to 101 on our voter rolls that are marked hidden because they are active duty military, which is an impossibility. We've got to clean these voter rolls up. The software will integrate with Every oh. agency out there, it'll chew mm -hmm. through it, and we can clean up those voter rolls. So, I'm well, let me ask you theme. because because uh, Defend Florida that that was our all, that the whole business in phase one of Defend Florida was cleaning up the voter rolls, and um, we determined twenty percent of the voter rolls are dirty throughout the state. Yes, um, <clears throat> and so, but fight as we might, uh, we were never really uh, successful at uh, mandating that they be cleaned up. Now, our voter rolls here in Pinellas um, had like, uh, have been cleaned off of, I think it was 690,000 after the 2020 election and now it's down to 610,000. I mean, I don't know how that happens, but why wasn't that done prior to the- <laughs> People are in a panic mode. A lot of folks are in save their soul mode right now. And okay, I'll appease people. We'll do this, we'll do this for me. This should be done day one. It shouldn't be under threat. It shouldn't be under mob coming out and saying, fix it now. This should all be proactive. Maintaining your machines, maintaining your equipment, ensuring your staff is the correct staff for what you need to do. Uh, systems integration, having paper receipts for everything. Because when the electronics fail, you've got the paper receipt to go back and personally look at, thumb through it, put it online. Let the people see what happened. Don't just tell them, show them, be 100% transparent and honest with what's going on. Unfortunately, so many of these SOEs don't want to do that because they know they were not 100% true and accurate. But That's they right. keep us spouting that when I'm sitting here with the data that says otherwise, but they keep yeah. saying error-free elections. Yeah. If you have an error, they own, double the down. error own the error, yeah. acknowledge the error, bring it forward and say, here is our postmortem on it. 
We now know it was either a training issue, it was a personnel issue, it was an equipment issue, uh, it was just an act of nature. What what caused it, and what do we need to do to correct it? Then put a plan in place to make the corrections. But well, unlike any of my my opponent or anyone else in the state, I'm going to be a lobbyist for election integrity with our legislators and say, I'm not part of that group. Here's what we need as an outsider looking at this with a fine tooth comb to say, this is what we need. Here's how we can obtain it. Yeah, and only if we are able to replace enough of our SOEs will that really be successful. I know Tom Vale is mm -hmm. running up in Lake. Um, uh, we real. I wish you were here to run, but I'm so glad that you're help that you've stepped up there for Charlotte County. Um, and tell tell the audience now how you best they can best help you in this so, race because you need to get in there, no yeah. question. So if you are in Charlotte County or the surrounding counties and want to physically help. We do canvassing every other Saturday. We're going to be doing one this Saturday. We are going door to door. Uh, and it's not just myself. We've actually got a group of quality grassroots candidates that are working actively together to make the changes necessary in this county, hopefully in the state in the long run. Now, um, I, but if, I, I, let me stop you there because I pulled up and, and checked, clicked on events. I don't see it there, but where can they go on your website uh, to get all this information? So right here um, is, am I at the right page? So Get there's another on. group that, yes. So there's an, so if they want to click on here, they can sign up and then they'll receive an email to everything that's going on in when we are having our events, okay. uh, such as canvassing, or if we're having, if there's a speaking event, they're welcome to come out to the speaking event. I try to get new folks to each speaking event. Um, you tend to, with the Republican Party and the Republican clubs, you tend to speak to the same 150 people over and over. I, know. I want to see new faces. I want those mm -hmm. folks to go out and say, you know what? I'm not going to fill that room, but I'm going to bring another person or two other people to your meeting to start hearing what you have to say. And that's what we need. We need those folks telling folks that have already heard the message to get those folks in to hear the message, tell them to come in and check things out. There's a number of different podcasts out there um, that they can go out to. The Mike and Bassiani show, I was on there talking about some of what was going on. Your show, talk about what's going on. Or they can contact me directly. The phone number that is actually on the page right there is my personal cell number I've had for over 25 years. So they're gonna get me directly. They're not gonna get a campaign phone. They're not gonna get a staffer. They're gonna get me and we're gonna have a conversation. And if they want the documents, they wanna see what's going on, I'm more than happy to give it to them and show them what's going on and then lay out that plan for them. If they can't physically get involved, I ask folks, donate what you can, a dollar, $5, $20. It's 24, I jokingly stole this from somebody else, is kill ball for our nation. If we're not successful as a nation and as a party taking back our presidency and many of our state and local offices, we're a nation lost. And, yes, we are. I'm in total agreement uh, with you at, there. At that point, I, I think we all know our only option to correct it, and our founding fathers gave us that means to correct it. Unfortunately, it is a it's a very dark road. So get yeah. involved, get out there, get into your RECs, get into your clubs, get involved. Don't just go to the dinners and sit and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Get involved, make the phone calls for people, be involved any way you can with a campaign, not just mine, but any other grassroots campaign that you, you feel you align with, get involved, make the difference, get your voice heard. Like my wife always says, be the change you want to see. And that is what Warren 2024 is all about. You couldn't have summed it up better for me. David, thank you so much for coming on. I'll do whatever I can to help you down there. Folks, please get involved with his campaign. Um, it's hard work when there's few, but when there's many, it makes it so much easier. So God bless you, David. I'll be watching you. your campaign. Good luck. Thank you.